of that in- introduction, it makes me feel slightly less a fish out of water because I was sat through this morning and one of the presenters said, I'm not an archaeologist, and I thought, I have to say that. I'm not an archaeologist, but uh, I'm here and I hope what I've got to say will be of interest. Um, you see in the photo there, uh, the street looking up towards the parish church in Winterton, North Lincolnshire, um, All Saints Church. It's right in the middle of the town. Uh, it's a small town. Uh, it's in the conservation area. It's the oldest building in the settlement, as you might imagine, because it was a medi- well, it has been a, a medieval town. Um, now it's more of a dormitory settlement, some might, might say. Um, and the church fabric you see there, uh, although the Victorians messed about with the roof and the parapets, uh, the tower that you see, most of that tower is very old, it's before 1100, uh, probably 1080, 1090, just after the Norman Conquest. Uh, we're fairly sure about that from the work that's been done by others. And it's, uh, as far as we're concerned, a very precious resource. I suppose you could say it's living archaeology if there is such a thing. But um, people, well, we have had archaeologists in there, but normally people don't go to dig there. They go there for a range of other purposes. So, just to sort of fill you in on what's happened so far, um, Winston's not a big place, it's, it's just under 5,000. Um, it used to be the town before Scunthorpe appeared, uh, at the um, time when the steelworks were being developed. So it's a sort of a little town uh, that has been overtaken by events around it. Very nice place to live, very, very strong community feeling. The church is grade one listed, Um, But, as with many parish churches, uh, over many years the congregation has been getting smaller, the congregation has been getting older, uh, the finance to run the place is getting more and more difficult, and the church council, um, of which I'm a member, the parochial church council, some years ago did some very serious thinking about what is going to happen to this, not just as a church, as a religious community, but the building as a superb, uh, mostly medieval building, what is going to happen? And the outlook didn't look terribly optimistic. And so, um, leading up to 2009, there were a series of uh, thinking sessions and conversations and actually got going in 2009 uh, with a very, very big public consultation. We fortunately had enough money to employ a facilitator from outside to come in and consult with Uh, individuals with the Methodist Church, we have a Roman Catholic congregation that meets there with them, with non-church people, with the town council, with youth organisations. It was a really, really big consultation uh, across the whole community and that led to public meetings in 2010, 12 and 14 where we reported back on the thinking that was going on and the ideas that were being developed uh, so that other people could feed in and crucially we could keep everybody informed about the way we could see the future beginning to develop. Uh, There was a planning group, which we called All Saints Forward, which met uh, from 2010 to 2014. And because we had the parish magazine, we also in our community have a quarterly newsletter, which is free of charge. It goes to every house in Winterton and beyond. Uh, And there was constant publicity. You will not be surprised to know there are still people who said, I didn't know anything was going on, (laughs) but, but, you know, uh, such is life. We did everything we could think of. We had the local community television, we had stuff in the newspaper, uh, just because we knew if we had a chance of success, uh, everybody, if possible, needed to be informed and we needed to try, where possible, to take their views into account. That all led up to a Heritage Lottery Fund project to repair, although the church wasn't in a terrible condition, it did have a bit of leaking roof, like many churches. We wanted to reorder the Victorian interior, which was uh, very, very heavy pitch pine pew benches with floors at different levels, and it was just impossible to do anything. We wanted to reorder the interior and those capital works. We got about, uh, the whole project was about a million pounds, Heritage Lottery, uh, put up about three quarters of a million and we found the other 210,000 from other sources and a great deal of capital works went uh, ahead in 2014-15. We haven't finished 
um, that's another story. But you know, we've got more fundraising and, and more work to do. But we've got a huge amount done. Now, as many of you will know, with Heritage Lottery, you don't get the money unless you demonstrate to them what payback are they going to get in terms of people being engaged and learning about heritage and being involved and all those other things. So as part of our activity plan, we had the idea that we should have a friends group, uh, which we set up in 2014. Now, uh, I've been a member of the church council and I've, I've been to other churches and I'm, I'm not in any sense wanting to be negative or derogatory, so please don't misunderstand me, but I'm sure you've seen the sort of leaflets where it looks like a, a very earnest and well-meaning set of people and by the look of it they must have fairly deep pockets and be prepared to dig in and, and, and give sums of money. Obviously we would love sums of money but what we needed even more was people <coughs> to do things because there was no way we could deliver the feedback to uh, Heritage Lottery that they wanted lots of things going on unless we had more people to make it happen. So. This friends group was set up uh, as part of this overall plan to get greater community use. And the amazing thing was, you've, you've already heard from uh, other speakers today, the amazing thing is when you ask, it is surprising uh, what you find out people are prepared to volunteer for. Uh, this is a copy of the slide I used in 2014 uh, at the meeting we had. Uh, we did encourage people to come with the buffet and a glass of this and that, you know, to sort of say there wasn't going to be a lovely time if only you'll come to this meeting. But it was one of those March spring evenings where the rain started and carried on incessantly throughout the evening. But it was astonishing. We had about 80 to 90 people uh, come into the church, even uh, somebody in their wheelchair and their wheelchair raincoat to make they weren't going to be left out. They were there as well. And it was a very, very successful evening. And we sort of talked through all the possibilities that there were, uh, we tried to explain what we wanted the friends group to be, involving people, doing things, giving time and their skills and energy. We were trying to get across that the community resource was the church, not this idea which many in the community had built up that this was a sort of, um, you know, from the Victorian period that you went there on Sundays in your best hat and you had to keep quiet and you didn't run about and you, it was a place, as it was in medieval times, when the church was the place where everything happened. We know that in Winterton because there was a riot, almost certainly led by one of the church wardens, but that's another story for another time. Um, we, we talked about the sort of interest groups we had in mind. Uh, apart from the, the sort of religious side of it, as it were, uh, the worship side, uh, we wanted to develop welcoming so that the place was... Uh, much much more welcoming to people in the community and visitors to Winterton. Uh, we already ran a number of social events uh, such as we could in the limits of the interior of the church but we knew there were lots more options if we had as we now have you'll see later a completely level floor underfloor heating new lighting new everything and furniture that can be cleared so you just have one massive space inside if you want it. Uh, lifelong learning. Uh, we knew there were opportunities there if we could develop them and we gave out some ideas and tried to find out what others were thinking. Uh, obvious possibilities with the heritage. The church was lucky, it had a number of archives um, that it had uh, that needed cataloguing and sorting and, and, and conserving. Um, we knew we'd have to go in the 21st century for IT and modern display so we have a public Wi-Fi, uh, we've got a number of digital uh, <coughs> capabilities inside the church for people uh, to look at as well as a new website on the way. Um, the building group, actually when this meeting took place, hadn't been something we'd thought through properly, that's been added in since. Um, we, we have a, pe a group of people uh, from the community who just are interested in making sure the building is properly looked after. Um, all sorts of people have come along to that. Um, the tower clock is still wound by hand. It's an 1834 tower clock that's been kept going and it's not electric, it's still wound by hand every week. Uh, when we uh, asked for volunteers, we had four people wanted to do it. Well, we settled with two, so they can go on holiday. They don't have to be there every week of the year. Um, because we asked 
people responded. If you don't ask, they don't often respond. Um, and then lunch clubs. We can't do those yet because we haven't got the kitchen. That's the bit that's still got to be built. Um, so what's the impact of these things been? We made it clear the friends group was free. There was no membership fee. Anybody from anywhere could join as long as they agreed with the aims we had, which were to keep this wonderful building going and make sure it was available for as much com community as, as, as possible. Um, it does mean that people can offer their time and skills uh, and show a practical interest in keeping the building going and, and, and that's what we found when we did this pu public consultation. There was a huge amount of goodwill towards the building. People didn't come on a Sunday, they might not come ever during the year, but it was their church and they wanted it to be there for their own purposes, whatever they might be, and obviously they're hugely wide-ranging. We also found that, well, we had it in mind, that if we could utilise the interests of the friends, then we would perhaps get far more um, out, of, out of them because we would be allowing them to feed things in. So, for instance, um, we never had it in the original plan to have a film club, but there's one of the volunteers who was really wanting a film club, so we agreed to him set it up. Um, somebody else wanted to have a singing for pleasure group, not a, a choir as such, but just where people could go and sing. That wasn't in the original plan. Uh, that we've used their interest to let them modify things as, as time goes by. Because we were clear that if more people in, were involved, there'd be more use, uh, more use, it would be more valued by the community. That one way or another would produce more income and the building would then have a sustainable future because there would be a greater level of income being provided for it. That would mean we could get better practical care for the fabric and the contents. Um, you know, with these old buildings, you hear a lot about maintaining the fabric and looking after that properly. But inside, there's, there's um, some tables that have almost got, almost certainly got 17th century uh, turned legs on one table and probably 16th century turned legs on the other table uh, even though the tops are modern. This is the sort of stuff we found out from the project we now realise we've got to look after the contents properly not just the building itself. And it is of course available for a much wider range of community uses than it was before. When it comes to impact on the participants um, there's a lot of learning taking place um, about the heritage of the church. We had all sorts of condition reports on the organ, on the West Gallery instruments, on the archives, on the stone monuments, a whole range of reports uh, telling us things we didn't know before. Um, we found out that some, uh, we knew the doors in the church were very old uh, because they looked old, um, you know, but, but it's only when you realise that one of the experts came in, you have read so-and-so's book, um, Jane Geddes, she's Professor of Art History at Aberdeen, I think. Uh, you have read it? No, never heard of it. So I get a copy of this book and it was absolutely wonderful. There's this page of photographs, a doorway in Westminster Abbey, and the next one, Winchester Cathedral, then Winterton All Saints, all on the same page. I thought, fantastic. We didn't realise we had three medieval doors which in one church, Jane Geddes says, is very, very unusual. And we've been able to get more people in the community learn about this. And of course, uh, research in the archives, not just about the church, but about the town as well. We've got uh, a much larger number of people now who understand more about the fabric, not just um, lime mortar pointing and all that kind of stuff, but you know, looking after some of these old furniture uh, and the, the medieval iron and, and, and woodwork on the doors. There's much more increased enjoyment in the community because they can see now, uh, they can come in for different purposes and enjoy the building in different ways. Even though we haven't got a kitchen, we've got this huge flat floor now that we can use. We cleared it in October. We, we got an outside catering and had a, a white tablecloth banquet, you know, the full works, as it were. Uh, we have recently had a Burns Night Supper run by the Lions Club, um, things of that sort which can be done. We can have a jazz concert now. Well, before we had a jazz concert crammed in pews. 
now we can get our circular five foot circular tables out, dot them about the place, people can sit round with a glass of wine and a jazz concert. It's a much more pleasant community atmosphere than ever it was before. On a Sunday it's a church, but on other days it can be whatever you want it to be in a lovely, lovely setting. Health benefit. Uh, one of our volunteers who is a little bit um, well covered, shall I say, um, and uh, uh, verging on diabetic, his wife told us he'd lost a stone over a period of time because he'd been doing so much work in the church and I can personally volunteer that the new oak chairs we've got are not light. If you spend an hour moving 140 that way and then 100, you know, it's, it's a good workout, there's no gym fees or anything. Um, that's another possible income source for the church. <laughs> increase in civic pride. Winterton, people who live there love the place. It's one of these places where there's a very strong community feeling, but there was no, you couldn't buy a postcard, there was no book about the history, there was nothing to sort of engender that feeling that there are treasures in this place. Just, just appreciate, not the community feeling, but what you've got. Uh, I'm hoping we're contributing to that. There's certainly been much more social interaction, and we hope when we get the proper kitchen, the lunch clubs and the other things will feed into that even more. There's certainly much more understanding of how you should look after a grade one listed building. Traditionally in parishes people moan about the diocese and they won't allow you to do this and they won't allow you to do that. We now have got more people who understand why that process is necessary so that you don't get what has happened so often in the past where a well-meaning man down the street says, oh I can fix that, I'll mix up cement and have that done in no time and of course can do a huge amount of damage. <coughs> so, um, sustainability as well. Uh, we feel that because we are delegating responsibility, there's this increase in knowledge, the community is much more likely to realise how to ensure that building survives. We think we've got a change in culture. The church is not just for this closed church community. It's not just a religious spot which gets used once a week. It's a place which is for everybody and it can be used for a range of different things. And to be fair, the role of the PCC, the Church Council, I think has changed. Because whereas there was a certain pessimism before, it's now much more positive. They can see that by involving the community, the responsibility is widened, it's shared. It's not just resting on the shoulders of a few. The Church Council still has the legal responsibility, but there are far, far more people involved. And therefore, we end up with... <coughs> Uh, the top photo of a heritage centre uh, which has got information about the church and the town uh, the middle top view and the right hand view uh, the interior of the church we've got this modern oak furniture which can be cleared away so you just have one big space and down here a jazz concert with people sat around glasses of wine and that's a community banquet we had in October so we're not finished we're in the middle of a journey, we've a long way still to go, but we, we think we've done something which is helping this building to survive as it has done for the best part of a thousand years. Thank you very much.